just a trim, a shave, a little off the sides, words uttered by those sitting within the confines of the barber's chair. However, for some, more is lost sitting on that chair than simple locks and strands. This is the story of one Mr. David C. Price and the love of his life. It was early one afternoon when he saw her for the first time, and as she passed, she stopped and spoke to Mr. Price. Who do you think you're looking at? Thought as much. You know what? Why don't you take these and clean yourself up a bit, you filthy mongrel? Yes, Mr. Price was a sad and lonely man, and perhaps even a bit heartbroken. But at least he had three quarters, all to himself. And what luck! For there, on the corner, was a barber shop that he had not noticed before. Didn't see you there. How long has this place been open for? I haven't noticed it. <clears throat> I was just gonna get a trim, but it seems like you're close, so. I, I could come back another time. It's Sure, the barber was quiet, but of course many people are, and so Mr. Price sat and got his trim. The scissors snipped with speed and grace until finally he was finished, and the barber removed the smock. This is wonderful. She must notice me now. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. And so, filled with confidence, Mr. Price left the shop and awaited the return of the woman with gleeful anticipation. In a moment like this, he only wanted her more. He could think only of one place to go. The hair. It wasn't enough. I need something more. Perhaps a shave. Yes, a shave. That'll do the trick. And so the barber shaved Mr. Price's face. He shaved and shaved the straight razor gliding gracefully against the warm skin of his cheeks until not a single whisker remained. Fine job, sir. Fine job. Well done, thank you. With his trimmed hair and clean-shaved face, Mr. Price once more waited for his fair lady to pass. And so she did. Miss. I mean, excuse me. Well, look who it is. The mongrel. What do you want now? More money? 
No. Ma'am, I was just wondering if maybe you noticed anything different about me lately. I got a haircut and a shave, just like you asked. And, well, I'm handsome now. Do you truly believe that? Well, you're still wearing those rags. But I'm handsome. And so dear Mr. Price was once more left lonely and defeated on the street corner. But for those who refuse to learn from their mistakes, repetition often becomes second nature. It didn't work. I did everything she asked. I don't understand. something about my clothes. This. This will work. I need this. The barber then began his work, stiffening and styling the hair with pomade until it was sleek with beauty. And then came the suit, black, bold and dapper, with a red pocket square. Mr. Price was mesmerized by his own reflection. This will surely do the trick. David Price waited once more on the corner, filled with pride and confidence, for today was surely the day that she would fall for him. Hello, ma'am. Get out of my way. You like my suit? It's lovely. Now step aside. So, how about you and I go someplace nice this evening? <laughs> With you? I'll have to decline. Decline? Decline? Do you see this? Get out of my way, you filthy bum. You're gonna regret that, you bitch. Beaten and furious, David Price stewed in his own narcissism. And when he had finished seething, Mr. Price turned and headed for the only place he could feel at home. How could she turn me down? I'm the best looking man in this town, and she dares. Look at me. I'm... I'm incredible. I'm perfect. I'm incredible. I'm perfect. I'm And so was the end of David Charles Price as he was known, lost in his own world, a world of vanity and narcissism. There is a special place in hell reserved for the vain and the self-absorbed. For some, it's in a salon, a pageant, a barber shop. And should you ever spy the silent barber with his lifeless eyes and expressionless face, you must beware. For it is he, the prince of lies, who guides the men and women doomed by their vanity to hell. Because for those who spend their days pining for the mirror, they will almost certainly come to dwell within it. Just a trim, a shave, a little off the sides, words uttered by the lost and the damned, because sometimes more is lost sitting in that chair than simple locks and strands. So the next time you see those spinning stripes outside the barbershop doors, consider the story of one Mr. David C. Price before taking a seat atop that chair. Good night.